Hey guys, we're back on Staten Island. Today we're working on a 1998 Chrysler Sebring, I think? Yeah, with the 2.5 liter V6. And the customer complaint is it's not running the uh, emissions monitors. It hasn't run them in two years. And I guess the inspection's expired. So we're gonna see uh, what we can find here. I already got the Varus plugged in. We're going to start with generic mode here. Let's see. Try to minimize the glare. <clears throat> so let's see which tests are complete. We got fuel system complete. Catalyst is not complete. EVAP is complete. Uh, O2 sensor heater not complete. And then misfire is complete. That's good. O2 sensor, EGR system. And that's about it. So, it looks like here um, that anything that has to do with the oxygen sensors is not being set, like the catalyst, the O2 sensor heater, and uh, let's see what else here. Uh, I guess EGR, that's another one we have to focus on, the EGR system. So, O2 sensors and EGR. Now, let's go look at our data stream. See if these oxygen sensors are alive. Uh, there were no trouble codes when I started, and just to check that the computer is able to set trouble codes, I unplugged the intake air temp sensor, and we can see that in our trouble codes, should have the intake air temp sensor fault. Now it's plugged back in, but this is a, basically a check if the <clears throat> the constant keep alive power is good at the computer. So we have a P0113 trouble code there. So that's, you know, I set that. That's We're not worried about that. Let's look at the current data. We'll look at our O2s, fuel trims, and we'll, we'll see. All right, so here's our data. Intake air on closed loop, engine coolant temperature, short term, long term trims, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, let's look at our O2 voltages here. So, sen sensor one, sensor one should be oscillating. Now, this data stream is kind of slow. So the amplitude looks good. We're not getting any codes for the oxygen sensors. So, hmm. Alright guys, so I'm in the troubleshooter and I just want to get some more information on what it takes to you know complete this drive cycle. So in test and procedures there's this uh, drive cycle procedures, how to drive the OBD2 drive cycle. So let's see if there's any useful information in here. So let's see here. I started to not um <clears throat> That temp, ambient temp, must be between 0 and 100 degrees Fahrenheit. 
must be between 40 and 90 for evap to run coolant temp must be within 10 C of bat temp at start of test for O2 heater and the evap monitors to run the engine idle 2.5 minutes uh, defrost on huh. O2 heater and evap monitors to run bat temp 1.9 volts Turn off AC, accelerate at 55. So it looks like our O2 sensor heater runs first. So that's that's a big clue. That's the one that is not complete right now. Uh, and then later we have misfire fuel trim purge monitors, EGR air and O2 sensor purge monitors. Let's see. EGR, fire, fuel trim, etc., etc., catalyst after a steady cruise. Again, EGR. It may take five separate cycles for the cat monitor to complete. So we're worried about this initial. O2 sensor heater. Uh, test. So this bat temp, I don't know what this 1.9 where, where that comes from. Is there a temperature for the battery you know on the battery? And then our coolant temperature. So so basically we kind of missed the opportunity you know to look at this stuff when the engine was cold. But let's try to find these data pids in the in the list. And sure enough, we have our battery temperature pid right here. It's 1.9 volts and it's stuck at 68. So I want to see where the sensor lives. Is that a substituted value? Because if it is, then then you know <laughs> if, if that temperature is 68 you know if it's like 30 degrees outside that monitor isn't going to run in the cold now <clears throat> oh, excuse me um, our component test meter won't help us there but this temperature should should change I mean I'm running the car it's it's kind of a you know Temperature doesn't just stay like that. Like our intake air is 98. Let's see, maybe rev this up a little bit. There you go, intake air goes up. So battery, battery temperature is not changing. 68 degrees. Let's uh, let's look up some information as bat temp. So we've been sitting here for 10 minutes with the engine on. The uh, bat temp is stuck at 68 degrees. So we're going to all data. We're going to look up some information on this battery temperature sensor and see where it lives. Oh, not convertible. We're not equipped with the battery temperature sensor. Component is only found in Sebring convertibles. Okay then. So it is a substituted value. That's kind of that kind of sucks. Let's see, testing and inspection. Hmm. Testing for the PCM can be found. Blah blah blah. Oh, that doesn't help. Dang it. So I'm looking at some TSBs here. This is on BBB Industries. And this TSB is called Readiness Monitor Information. Okay, and it's applicable to our uh, Sebring right here. So uh, basically, it'll walk you through what the requirements are and how the monitors run, what the order is. So this should be more specific than the Varus was. So for a front wheel drive, it looks like the EVAP leak detection monitor runs first. Requires a cold start. So this and that, okay. Then the next test 
is the catalyst monitor, which is weird. Usually the other tests run before the catalyst. It says the vehicle must be driven at highway speed for the time listed in the pre-test screen. If the vehicle is equipped with manual transactional, use fourth gear. Then the EGR goes. Then the O2 sensor monitor. Then the purge monitor. Let's see here. Purge flow. And then the O2 sensor heater monitor is actually the very last one to run, which is weird. Now, if you look at rear wheel drive, you have the O2 sensor heater monitor, then the EVAP leak detection, then catalyst, then O2 sensor heater, then purge. So it's a different order, but we have a front wheel drive. So that kind of throws a wrench in the works. So we're more worried about the catalyst monitor now. Um, and to get that to run, you need to take it to highway speed. I mean, uh, you know, maybe this car's just driven in the city and it's never been on the highway in two years. So, you know, I'm not quite sure on that. <coughs> but, you know, right now I don't have time to test drive it, uh, go on the highway and stuff. So, I'll do a little more digging here uh, and then we'll, you know, take it from there. Maybe we'll have to tell them to just take it out on the highway and, and drive it. All right guys, we're looking at some basic data here. The upstream O2 sensors. This is OEM data, custom list. So the data transfer is a lot faster now. Do we like what we see here? See the front upstream, nice and smooth. The rear upstream seems to be, uh, I don't know, not as smooth. <laughs> What's the best way to describe it? Yeah, maybe that's normal. I'm going to give it a little gas. Yes, a lot faster now. You can see the frequency on the rear is actually higher than the one on the front. It's like hyperactive or something. See what I'm saying? Let's let it idle again. start the oscillations again. See how choppy the right the right one is? It's just you know doesn't look as nice as the left one. And you know that Chrysler's are very picky about their oxygen sensors. And if you look underneath this thing these oxygen sensors are kind of covered in oil. <laughs> now, would this be a cause for not running the monitors? Anything's possible. Uh, in this case, you know, looking at our TSBs, it has to run the catalyst monitor before anything else. And if it sees this, um, well, let's see. Let's pull up also the downstream O2s. I'm just curious now. Let's graph all these upstreams, downstreams. I raise it up a little bit. That does not look like a good does not look like a good cat, does it? You can see the data stream is starting to alias since we're looking at four PIDs instead of two. There's the man. <laughs> well, I talked to the boss and he had. Uh, How are the fuel terms on it? Fuel terms are perfect. I mean, they're like 5%.
five percent. Yeah. Okay. Um, but this this is definitely a discrepancy. So before before going too deep into this, I would say it needs two new upstream O2 sensors, OEM, so we have a good baseline because this pattern right here is just not uh, not a clean signal. It's it's very different from from the front. So I don't know. Uh, I guess we'll uh, revisit this if uh, if time allows.